Hey guys, got a few requests, a uh, few people asking how you would set up this 9XR for the Phantom or NASA software. Uh, just a quick rundown, all my settings and how I have it set up. This is a Turnigy 9XR. I am running the FrySky DJT with telemetry modules. I have the D8 RXP, I think it is, with a voltage sensor on both my crafts. I have the original DJI Phantom with the NASA M V1 inside of it, and I also have an ADS frame with a NASA light on it. I have uh, both models programmed into this remote, but I didn't really realize that it's the same settings for both models, so kind of wasted my time. Uh, and basically what I'm getting at is once you program this for one NASA controller or one NASA craft, you can basically use it for any of them as long as you are using the same transmitter and receiver on the next craft. Um, this is a 9XR. I have it programmed with ER9X. Not in no real specific reason why I did that. I think I was just bored one night, but it functions basically just like the original 9XR software. So everything that I'm telling you here does not have to be specifically in the ER9X. I don't know if I got that backwards, but it is running the ER9X software. Um, quick rundown. All the buttons or switches and knobs are away from you. Uh, everything's in the neutral position with throttle down. If you don't have that, I have it set up to where this remote will give me an alert. So everything that I have set up is basically so you have no alerts when you first turn on your uh, 9XR. Looking at the front, we have the rudder switch is for IOC, Intelligent Orientation Control. Away from you is off. When you turn it, pull it towards you, it turns IOC on. At that time, the gear controller away from you is home lock and towards you is course lock. So with this off, this doesn't matter where this is at because it doesn't register in the NASA. But when you bring this in, either home lock away from you, course lock up front. Uh, I put little labels on there just so I remember out in the field. I don't use IOC often, but when I do, I certainly don't really want to get mixed up. Uh, outside of that, I have my gimbal control set up to P3. This right here is P3. This would be referred to as P2, and this would be referred to as P1. Um, I'm assuming they have that set up for the POTS knob. POTS 3, POTS 2, and POTS 1. Uh, either way, it's called P3, 2, and 1 in the system. This three position switch is referred to as the ID uh, 0, 1, and 2. So top is 0, 1, and 2. And this, I'm going to refer to it as the aileron switch. Um, what it's really called, I don't know, but I'm going to call it that. Uh, back on point, everything functions just like the DJI controller. Throttle, everything uh, turns around here, and your yaw. This is the three position switch. Up top is GPS, middle is Addy, and down is the user controlled box, whether it be manual or fail safe. I would recommend manual since we're going to program this for this aileron switch to be your fail safe. So no matter what position this is, if you hit that down, it is going to go into fail safe. Um, I, if you don't want it that way, good luck. I, I just programmed it. What you're going to see is settings for that to happen. I read it on someone else's YouTube when I was learning how to set this up for a three position flight controller switch. He had it set up to where when you push both down it was automatically in fail safe since NASA only has the three flight controls. I just made that a permanent fail safe switch. Uh, there's nothing in NASA that you have to program to make it that way. We've programmed in the settings that when you flip this switch down, it's basically not going to get enough signal for it to land on either GPS or ADDIE or manual. It puts it in the areas in the middle, which is a fail-safe mode. Yes, I've tested it. Yes, it works. Um, getting on to the programming of the actual remote. I'll run through the remote settings themselves so you get an idea uh, what the actual remote settings are. If you press the left button and hold it for three seconds, you will go into the radio setup. 
going down. This is for if you need any trouble set, uh, troubleshooting issues or any diagnostics. Um, you can refer to what I actually have it set up as. And the most important thing is probably going to be on the bottom. And that's going to tell us what mode we're in. I have this one set up for mode 2. And I have uh, basically this PPM sim off. I had that turned on for some reason. Um, and it really threw the controller through a loop. So make sure that's turned off. But mode 2, uh, this is basically what it's going to take to get it to perform just like the Phantom controller. Uh, nothing else, I'm going to go back up and scroll through the rest, nothing else is anything that you'll need to change in the actual radio setup. Uh, the version is going to be an ER9X software, but again, you can use this on the regular 9XR software. Going back into the model menu, I do have three models in here, two and three, basically the same. I don't even switch to three anymore, I either fly the Phantom or the ADS, I leave it on whatever mode I'm in. Setup, I'll run down this just so you can use it for troubleshooting. At the bottom, well actually right here, we do need to select this as PPM 8 channel. So you can change those two right there. It does need to be PPM 8 channel for the Phantom to work correctly. And delete model, no we don't want to do that. So we'll scroll over, we need no heli setup, no expo, and our mixer, this is where everything is going to happen. If you notice, we have channel 1, 100% aileron, channel 2, 100% elevator, channel 3, 100% rudder. Uh, actually, let me correct myself, 100% throttle, and channel 4 is going to be rudder. So 1, aileron, 2, elevator, 3, throttle, and 4, rudder. You need those 100% on all of them. I'll jump into one just so you get an idea of what the specifics are inside that. So source, aileron, weight 100%. You do not need to turn on any trims but or turn on any switches like we will in the rest, but do note that that trim is turned on. This is just for the stick control, so that should be pretty set forward. Channel 5 is going to be our X1 input for our gimbal control or whatever you want to use X1 for. You can use it for your gain control in the NASA software. Going into this, we'll just simply hit the menu button and we do need that as source 3. If I wanted to use any of the other pot knobs, 2 would be the knob to the right above the throttle and P1 would be the knob all the way to the right near the 3 position switch. I prefer P3 simply due to when I put it at, you know, 50% throttle it hovers, I can reach up and uh, change the position of the gimbal as needed. We are going to need that to be a weight of 100% and our switch is just going to be on. That means if the knob is at 0, it's 0% 0 signal. If it's at 100%, it's sending 100% signal. That way you get the 100% uh, spread that knob is going to provide. Going down into channel 6, this is going to be our IOC controls. Our very first mix is going to be source of half, weight of 100, and our switch is going to be gear on the bottom. So source half, weight 100, and our switch will be gear on the bottom. Going down to another mix in channel 6, first let me show you how you would add additional mixes. I'm going to go to a blank channel. So if we wanted to work on channel 9, we're going to hit menu and go in there. And I'm just going to put random stuff in here just so you can see it. We're going to do source full weight 100 throttle switch. So going back, you'll notice that we have that set for channel 9. Now I want to add an additional mix for channel 9. I'm just going to put the line right below channel 9 and hit menu. At that time, it's going to give me an additional mix for channel 9 and we'll put that to rudder. So now you can see I have added two mixes to channel 9. So all you will need to do is add the line underneath the channel and hit menu. At that time it will give you another mix. You can add as many as you like or as little as you like. You usually either need one, two, or three, maybe four. 
Um, let me go ahead and delete these just to delete them. Shortcut, you can press up to go to the bottom. Just hit the delete to delete that mix. I'm going to delete this one as well. And one more. So we deleted all those out. Now you know how to add the additional mixes. Back to channel 6. Um, we talked about the first one. I'll go through it again to not confuse you. So the first mix, we need a half of a, the source. So source is half, weight is 100, and the switch is gear. We need an additional mix in channel 6. This time we need it at negative 100. So we'll go to the left until we get to negative 100. We need our source to be full, and we need this to be on our rudder switch. That's basically going to take care of our IOC. Um, home lock and course lock is, is two options, so you can either go you know, full on or full off, and it kind of understands it in NASA. Now we're going to go into our three position switch. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult, but just follow along and you'll get it all right here, easy as it can be. First mix, we need source half, weight 69, switch ID 0. Source half, weight 69, switch ID 0. The next one, we are going to have half for the source, a weight of 5. And our switch is ID 1. Source half, weight 5, switch ID 1. And our next one is going to be half for the source. The weight is negative 63. So to the left to 63. And our switch is going to be ID 2. Source half, weight negative 63, switch ID 2. And our failsafe, we are going to, this is again in channel 7 still, we need a source of half, weight of 17, and our switch is going to be the elevator, elevator, weather, rather, <laughs> we'll do that one again. Source half, weight 17, switch aileron. Mm -hmm. That's basically going to cover it. That's all, all that you really need to get flying. The aileron switch is our failsafe, like discussed. ID012 is going to be our GPS, ADDI, and user input. Um, other than that, guys, it's, it's very simple. I'll scroll through the rest of them. I have the limits for channel 5 turned down just a little bit as the gimbal was overshooting itself. So instead of going into the gimbal controls... I uh, just went in here and set the limits. You don't need to do that, but if your gimbal is going up too high or going down too low or spinning around, you're more than welcome to limit how far that knob controls the gimbal. No curves, no switches, no safety, no templates. Well, that would be if you're setting up your new controller, but you don't need any of that stuff. Very simple, very much to the point. You just need to run down this mixer and program it in, and you will be in the air.